Hacking a cold wallet isn't as easy as people think. It requires serious expertise, specialized tools, time, and a whole lot of money just to carry out a single attack. So when I hear someone say my cold wallet was hacked, I know that 99% of the time this is not the case. More often than not, it's a user error. But that's why I wanted to dig deeper and learn exactly how cold wallets are hacked. So since I'm not a hacker myself, I turned to Ledger's security team of white hat hackers to learn how these attacks work, the tools they use, and just how hard it is to hack a cold wallet. So in this video, I'll break down three real attacks that hackers use to try and crack cold wallets. Plus, I'll share my three golden rules that I've been following for the past five years to ensure that my crypto remains safe and I don't make these stupid user errors. Starting with the first attack, a side channel attack. With this attack, hackers listen to how a wallet behaves during sensitive transactions to figure out the pin code. Think of it like how burglars use a stethoscope to listen for the right combination on a safe. The hack begins by opening the wallet and removing the circuit board. Then the hacker welds wires to it so he can measure the power consumption using a tool called an oscilloscope. An oscilloscope is like a heart monitor but for electronics it shows wavy lines on a screen representing how electricity flows through the device over time by studying these patterns hackers can spot tiny changes in the power flow which are clues that reveal weak points in the wallet security in this attack the hacker records the power consumption while each digit of the pin is entered these patterns help him build a dictionary of power signatures tied to each number once the hacker has this data he runs a custom script to test each number in sequence until the right pin is cracked and once once the pin is cracked, the hacker gains full control of the device and is able to move funds and approve transactions without any restrictions. This next attack is called a power glitch attack and it's even more intrusive and time consuming. But if done correctly, a hacker can force the wallet to actually reveal its seed phrase. This attack works by briefly messing with the circuit's supply voltage, pushing the wallet into an unstable state. When this happens, the circuit becomes vulnerable, allowing the hacker to extract sensitive data. The process starts with the hacker taking apart the device and removing the chip. Then he connects it to a test setup to measure its power consumption, which under normal conditions should remain stable. But the goal with this attack is to shock the chip into behaving abnormally. To do this, he rapidly drops the voltage, causing the chip to malfunction in a way that exposes data it's supposed to keep secure. By confusing the chip, the hacker can trick it into revealing hidden information stored in the firmware. But cracking the firmware alone isn't enough since the data is encrypted. They still need to get the user's pin to fully access the wallet. Normally, hardware wallets limit the number of pin guesses you get before locking or erasing data on the device, but with direct access to the chip's data, the hacker can bypass all of these limits. Then using their custom script, they can brute force the pin as many times as needed until it's cracked, and then once successful, they gain access to the seed phrase, allowing them full control over the wallet's crypto. Of course, hackers save the most complicated hack for last, and this one requires a serious amount of expertise, money, and time, but if done right, it is extremely effective. It's called a laser fault injection, and it could take months of preparation because it requires a lot of research, precision, and patience. So here's how it works. Inside hardware wallets are circuits made up of components called transistors. These transistors control how electricity flows through the wallet. But here's the thing, transistors are sensitive to light. So by shining a laser on them during normal operation, hackers can change how they function and trick the circuit into thinking it has permission to access restricted data, such as the seed phrase. This attack starts with disassembling the device and extracting the component they want to attack. Usually the secure element chip. They strip away any plastic covering it so the laser can directly reach the transistors. Next, they solder the chip onto a test board and connect it to an oscilloscope to monitor power patterns. The goal here is to identify specific activity in the circuit tied to secret information stored in the memory. The hacker carefully analyzes these patterns to pinpoint the exact transistor they need to target. To break past the chip's protection, they use a photo laser to confuse the circuit, making it think they're authorized to access the wallet's keys. And since the chip is microscopic, they have to do all of this under a 100x microscope. Then by firing the laser at different points, they watch how each transistor reacts. A red dot indicates no vulnerability, while a green dot indicates they found a weakness, and at that point, the attack is successful and they can access the wallet's seed phrase. Now, of course, hacks don't stop here. There are still plenty of other attacks a hacker could try to crack your cold wallet, but as you've seen, all these attacks require advanced skills, expensive equipment, and physical access to your wallet. The truth is, a majority the majority of wallets that are compromised aren't the result of these high level attacks that usually only take place in a professional environment such as Ledger Security Lab, but rather it's the result of user error. That's why I always say it's equally as important to know how to use your wallet as it is to choose a secure wallet. So how do you use your wallet securely? The first step is to understand what you're actually securing because you're not actually securing the crypto because wallets don't hold crypto, 
you're securing the keys that are used to access and manage your crypto and these wallets hold those keys. So how do you secure your keys? Well, you just follow these three golden rules that I've been following for the past five years to keep all of my crypto secure. A lot of people tell me that they store their keys in a cloud protected by two-factor authentication, but what if I told you this is one of the worst ways to store your keys? In fact, it violates rule number one, which is never store your keys online. For example, I had a subscriber call me after losing $3,500 worth of Bitcoin, and he was wondering what the heck happened. So after we ruled out some more common scams, Scams. Well, come to find out, he stored his seed phrase on his computer, and at some point he had downloaded some malware, which extracted his seed phrase and allowed the scammers to steal all of his Bitcoin. But if he had kept his seed phrase off of his computer, there's a very high likelihood that he would still have all of his Bitcoin. Another common mistake I see is people not fully understanding the importance of a seed phrase. Remember, anyone who has access to your seed phrase can access your entire wallet, whether they have your physical cold wallet device or not. That's why rule number two is simple. Never share your seed phrase with anyone or enter it on any website. One of the most common phishing scams tricks users into visiting a fake and malicious website where they have them enter their seed phrase. And this is usually done by phone or email, which you might think seems pretty obvious until it actually happens to you. And then you realize a lot of these scammers can be very convincing. In fact, the only time I almost fell for one of these scams is when I tried to contact Coinbase customer support because they had frozen some of my funds, except when I called them, it wasn't Coinbase customer support. It was a scam number. And the first red flag should have been that they answered the phone and were willing to help. Uh, the second red flag is when they were helping me and eventually asked me to connect my computer to a remote server so that they could see my screen. If I had followed through with this scam, they would have likely asked me to enter my seed phrase while they watched my screen and then they would have my seed phrase and be able to steal all of my crypto. But the worst scam of them all, at least in my opinion, claims new victims every single day. And the worst part about it is that most people don't even know how it happens, so they end up blaming their wallet when in reality, it was their fault. That's why rule number three is simple keep your cold wallet cold. And the way you keep your cold wallet cold is to never connect it to any external websites or platforms. Now, signing a contract approval is a normal part of transacting with crypto. However, websites is where you'll find malicious contract approvals. These contract approvals are usually spend approvals and spend approvals are completely normal when you swap crypto, for example. So in order to swap crypto from your wallet, you have to actually allow the digital contract to spend that crypto in your wallet and then give you the new crypto. However, if you're signing a malicious contract approval, what you're really doing is signing over complete access to that account in your wallet and then the scammers can steal your crypto. So that means if you're swapping, mining, or or claiming crypto airdrops, you should be using a completely separate wallet that's not your designated cold wallet for all these activities. And then once you're done with whatever you're doing, you can transfer that crypto or whatever it is back to your cold storage wallet for safekeeping. And even if you know how to revoke these contract approvals, it's still recommended not to connect your main cold storage wallet to any websites because these attacks can happen fairly quickly right when you sign the contract approval. So now you know how wallets are hacked and how to avoid being scammed, but you're probably wondering which wallet is immune to all these attacks. And this can be hard to know unless you're a hacker yourself, which again, I'm not, but fortunately, Ledger gave us some ideas on what makes a secure hardware wallet. So the key piece to any hardware wallet is a secure element chip. And this is the same exact chip that's used in your bank card and passport to protect sensitive data. And in our wallets, this is where our keys are stored. But not all secure element chips are built the same. Ledger recommends using an EAL certified chip. And this certification means a chip has passed rigorous security testing with EAL 5 plus or EAL 6 plus being the gold standard in the hardware wallet industry. Industry. And these levels of certifications offer protection against both physical tampering and remote attacks, keeping your keys safe. Another security feature that Ledger has been working to make standard in the industry alongside other hardware wallet manufacturers is what's known as clear signing. Now to demonstrate how clear signing works, I'm going to show you a transaction. If this popped up in your wallet when you initiated a transaction, could you tell exactly what is happening? Do you know how much of your crypto is being sent? where it's being sent to, and what funds are being sent. 
Probably not because that data is designed for computers, not people. This is called blind signing, so you're basically agreeing to a transaction that you don't actually understand, which can be a big security risk. But what if we took that confusing data and turned it into a human readable format like this? Now you can clearly see what you're swapping, how much, and to which address. And clear signing lets you verify all the details before confirming a transaction, which is exactly what you want when you're signing a crypto transaction. So by following the three golden rules I shared and and by using a wallet recommended by white hat hackers, which you can see in this next video, you can basically guarantee that you're not going to fall victim to any hacks or scams. Thanks for watching. God bless. Peace out.